human patient simulation on the public's health. Well, Celeste, thank you very much for having us here at your Sim Center. You're welcome. Did you, in your training, uh, go through simulation? Some level of simulation. When you stick a needle into an orange to simulate giving a shot, that's simulation. Mm -hmm. So the truth of it is we've been doing simulation for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we, most of us who've gone through training, healthcare training, you yourself, what we call body parts, where you have an arm and, and put an um, intravenous line into an arm, that's simulation as well. But no, I did not in my training, and I finished my, uh, my training in anesthesia in 1987. In 1988, mm -hmm. so it's it's relatively new. We did not use the sophisticated uh, mannequins, um, computerized equipment. Um, it's a relatively new thing. The scenario that uh, that we're watching here puts the student in a uh, a very challenging situation. I'm a student now, and I'm I'm in a, a sim lab, and and I'm a nurse anesthetist, and I'm looking at a monitor, mm -hmm. and there's a blood pressure, and there's a heart rate, and there's a respiratory rate. And somebody will just create a scenario where what, the blood pressure drops and the heart rate picks up and, and the student will have no idea what's happening and they will have to make an assessment about what's happening and figure out whether there's a myocardial infarction or perioperative ischemia going on in that setting. Hopefully they will have some idea of what is going on because mm -hmm. they have the data that we're presenting them with. We are presenting them with the data they would see in real life, what is on the monitor, what the patient is exhibiting, and they know a lot about the scenario, the, the context. Mm -hmm. They are given the opportunity to take that, process the information, make an assessment, go through a clinical decision-making process, um, and make a decision and implement it. So that's really what we're trying to get them to do, because the decision-making skills are in oh, the community. That's really. exciting. It is. The best part about this learning is they will they'll go through the scenario, but after we run yeah. them through the scenario, we take them into what we call a debriefing, and that by all accounts is the most important part of simulation. So we can use the videotape to highlight um, events and to really show them what it is that they did. There's nothing more powerful than watching yourself on tape. Um, but that, by all accounts, is the most important part of a simulation where they debrief, and that's where the real learning happens. Well, I've got hospitals and I've got patients and I can run my students through hospitals where they actually meet real patients mm -hmm. and have real life experiences. Why should I do this simulation thing? That's a great question. For a long time, that's why simulation really didn't take hold as a, techno as a um, methodology. One of the reasons is these days it is difficult, in fact, to get nursing students into a sufficient number of patient care settings where they actually are exposed to the types of illnesses, the types of situations where they need to have basic training. The second reason is that um, once one sees how effective the learning is in the type of setting where the students experience the learning and are able to reflect upon what they learn, guided by their faculty, um, it's, it's very m much more powerful and effective and there is as data to suggest that that's the case. Um, what do your students say about it when they go through this? Uh, what I get out of the sim lab is a really strong foundation for what's going to happen in the real world. Scenarios are, are pretty, they feel really real. You don't really notice that it's, you know, just a mannequin. It's so real in the sense that we really um, we really become comfortable with how we treat our patients. So when we go into the OR, we're not thinking about it, we're just doing it. There's a difference between reading it in a book and actually going through the steps. And although it's not a real patient, I think it definitely gives us a, a step up for, you know, when, when we go into the OR and actually do our real patients. So Samuel Merritt's been doing some things to try to bridge the gap between uh, the demand for the uh, workers and the potential workforce that's mm -hmm. out here in Oakland and elsewhere. How does the SIM Center sort of fit into that whole notion? Is it an issue of exposing kids to health careers? Is it an opportunity to actually bring people in here who otherwise you wouldn't be able to bring into a healthcare setting um, as easily? Is that mm -hmm. one of the ways in which the Simulation Center helps? That's one of the strategies, actually, that we use simulation for. Um, improving the quality of the um, education, the students are retained in the programs, 
they're probably more interested as well. I can mm -hmm. tell you that from experience. And therefore, you we get a, a larger number of product um, at the very end. Mm -hmm. We've had a tour of your you know very interesting facility. Mm -hmm. And you have very sophisticated machinery mm -hmm. and programmers and audiovisual equipment mm -hmm. and, and the like. Is this an expensive way to train students? The expense is certainly balanced by the effectiveness of the educational techniques that you can use once you know how to use this very fancy equipment. The other thing is is that simulation does not have to take all this fancy equipment that mm -hmm. we have here. We are we happen to be blessed with that and we happen to uh, be have a, a large core of people who want to learn, who are willing to learn and are willing to train us. But you can do very, very effective simulation with half the amount of equipment that we have here mm -hmm. and I think it's important for people to realize that. Well, anything else you want the viewers to know about this wonderful resource? It's just an exciting time for simulation. All kinds of technology is happening at lightning speed. So I just encourage anyone who's interested at all, who has an interest, there are lots of resources for information. There are a lot of ways to get involved, whether you're an educator. Um, if you're a student, you should uh, demand this, actually, is what I, I would say, so that um, we really can respond to the need. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful way to learn. Great. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.